standing there walking on eggshells about every aspect of being myself. Then I saw Glenn splashing in an Olympic pool of yolk and felt okay. Hey everybody, that was Tay Zonday. In case you've been living under a rock in the last 10 years or something like that, he wrote that song called Chocolate Rain that went mega viral. Uh, so cool for Tay to drop by and share his feelings. We're like, yeah, you know, okay, I might uh, swim in it once ever in a while. But I mean, everybody always says, oh, you shouldn't talk about politics. You shouldn't talk about religion. I'm just like, I gotta say what's on my mind. It's kind of been the whole point of this show. Have you not been paying attention? Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode number 299 of SMG Viewers Comments. Wow. Coming up on episode 300. Still debating what I should do for that to mark that off. I'm like, that is kind of a big number. I just want to say to everybody who's been watching this show week in and week out for nearly 300 episodes, thank you so much for being part of this. Uh, it really does mean the world to me. Uh, you guys have been absolutely amazing, even everybody who gets mad at me because I say something they don't like. Anyway, before we get started, if you could please do me the favor and hit the subscribe button, that would be a gigantic help to the show. And if you've got a comment or a question about recording, mixing, guitar, amps, any of that kind of stuff, leave it below. If I think it's cool, I'll put it on the show. Anyway, let's get right to it. Modern metal, at least the ones that are popular with online scene, have become less of an art form and more of guitar gear lessons advertising. Here's generic riff and a solo and odd time signature. By the way, buy the latest course, buy the new neural DSP plugin, buy the new roasted eight string strawberry bone or a bossy concept of roasted maple neck and hollow body. Check out this new overpriced pedal, how to get the modern metal tone. This is what I guess is one of the problems in the modern metal scene, all style, no substance. This is like patting yourself on the back, a circle jerk, you might say. Now this doesn't mean all modern bands should be lumped in the same category, but this is the online prog modern instrumental gent metal scene it has become, and it needs to stop if it wants to be taken seriously by a wider audience. Okay, you've got Marxist right in your screen name. So I'm thinking you might have, have a whole problem about, you know, like people making money with their art. Okay, that they're, they're, that's a debate that's not going to go away anytime soon. Now, the problem a lot of artists are facing is that if they are playing that modern gent prog kind of stuff is uh, people don't buy these anymore. They just, they just don't. I mean, like, not in any sense like they used to. This isn't the 90s where a band would put a CD out and even an in independent band could maybe sell a 1,000 or 2,000 or something like that. So musicians have had to get creative and figure out a new way to make a living, and that usually means working with product endorsements or lessons or that kind of thing. Speaking of lessons, we've got Henning Polly's drum course coming out today. I'll have a little bit of information about that a little further on in the episode. Seriously though, when I started this channel and I did the fans deserve better, the, one, of the, one of the concepts we, we discussed was the fact that studio budgets are dwindling and you just can't make money selling music anymore. It just doesn't work the way how it used to. So the, the game has changed. You know, obviously that means doing a lot of other things. But you stated that in order for these bands to be taken seriously, it has to stop. So I pose the question right back to you. What's your solution? I'm all ears. Glenn, is the quad cortex worth trading my Helix floor in for? Oh, dude, tough call. I mean, like the quad cortex is an absolute beast. You know, the Helix is really good too. I don't have any problems with that. Uh, the main advantage I think the Quad Cortex has, uh, besides the quad processing engine where you can load up a bunch of different amps, is the amp matching capabilities. So if you want to keep adding in new amps and you know downloading packs and that kind of stuff and keep experimenting that sort of thing, you might want to check out the Quad Cortex. I might actually be doing an amp pack based off my collection here. That might be really cool. We've been talking about it anyway. Uh, hopefully that might happen a little bit later this year. Oh no, here we go again. Musicians making money. Look out, Marxist dude, your head's gonna explode. Autotune is not great for rock and metal, but I don't see the problem with a bit of melody. Sure, you can get the best take possible, but even great singers need a bit of tuning to compete with today's standards. And today's standards are what I like to call fucking low. Yes, let's autotune everything to compete with what's out there. Why are we trying to compete with what's not good? I don't fucking understand that. Can somebody please explain that to me? All right, everybody. This episode is brought to you by me and my new company, Spectre Digital. We've now got Henning Pauly's complete guide to drum programming available. 
and I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I understand most of you guys don't have access to full kits and mics and preamps and the rooms and all that that goes along with recording real acoustic drums. And, and what that means is most of you guys are probably sitting at home programming in Superior or Get Good Drums or something like that. So my very good friend Henning Polly made a 15 hour course about programming drums and making them sound more human. Now, if you guys have ever seen Henning's show, yeah, he's a bit of a weirdo, but he does have a pretty amazing background. He's done records with James Labrie and Sebastian Bach, and he's done all these arrangements and stuff. So he really does have a good idea of what's going on. He actually sits down with a real drummer, shows you what's going on, and shows you how to program your drum sequencer to work more like a human drummer instead of just 127 the living shit out of everything that I know a lot of you guys do way too much. So if you want to get some help in programming your drums and making them sound maybe just a little less generic, I definitely recommend checking out Henning's complete guide to recording drums. It's on sale for 99 bucks. It usually goes for 150. It's going to be available for this week at that price. So grab it now while you can. Links in the description below. Now back to the show and I'm going to go take a shower because ooh, I feel so dirty. Pretty sad middle-aged man watching anime and pathetically attempting an April Fool's joke. Unsubscribed. You did something I don't like, Glenn. I'm unsubscribing. What in the actual fuck? I don't get the point behind that kind of post. A lot of guys fell for that April Fool's joke. I'm so sorry about that. It was so nice. So many people wrote in to say, no, no, I don't want this show to end. I love this show. Okay, it's great. Thank you so much for coming back week after week after week. And as for anime, I know there's an awful lot of you guys who watch this show who are also anime fans, and I think that's really fucking cool. Uh, just started watching the final season of Attack on Titan, and oh boy, is that ever fucking great. Absolutely loving that. Uh, I'm going to be doing a binge watching session tomorrow night, actually. So really looking forward to that, and hopefully I can get through the whole bit of the last season. Um, other nerdy stuff, started watching The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That's absolutely great as well. Uh, really excited to see what they're going to do with the MCU and the Star Wars universe as well. I can't wait to see uh, what's going to happen with the Book of Boba Fett series and the Ashoka series as well. It is a great time to be a nerd. Greetings and fuck you, Glenn. Andrew Taylor, also known as Halbeard here, asking you a question from beautiful bumfuck New York. I have my band's song Freak Show here. It's the same one that you took a look at a little while ago in Merciless Metal Mix Reviews. And I'm getting some strange artifacting at the end of the song. I've adjusted my sample rate and I've exported the tracks individually, but they still have that artifacting. Maybe it has something to do with the tempo mapping towards the end? Thanks and fuck you, Glenn. Andrew, that's a hell of an issue there. Honestly, when I first heard that, it sounds like you've got a cell phone reaching out trying to get a signal in. I've definitely heard that kind of buzzing before. It's usually caused by a cell phone, usually coming over a guitar pickup or something like that. My suggestion would be take a look at your individual guitar track, see if that noise is creeping up there, and you might have to retrack maybe the last segment of your guitar or something like that just to get a cleaner signal. I've definitely heard that creep up before, and I've had to yell at clients before to turn off their fucking cell phones when we're trying to record in here. If you guys out there are hearing something else, hey, please feel free to leave a comment below. Let's help Andrew out. Hey Glenn, Kamunga Strikes here. Now, I've just started doing some drum recordings for a little while now, and the first couple sessions I've had to deal with drummers that refuse to put sound holes in their resonant heads on the bass drum. Now, personally, I think that recording with this type of method is okay for like indie rock or like jazz but as far as like metal or hard rock could you get away with that or honestly should you have a sound hole in the resonant head just curious Hey, Kavaga, thanks so much for sending in a video question. That's super cool. And by the way, guys, if you want to do a video submission for your question, you want to be on the show, I'd love to have you on the show. Uh, please follow the link in the video description and you can send me a question. Just keep it under 30 seconds. Uh, that way it doesn't go on forever. Anyway, as for your question, I always record with a hole in the resonant head if it's a metal band, especially because that's going to give you that kind of natural compression going on and it's the sound that the drummer actually wants 
But this thing, if you try and explain abstract concepts to drummers like, hey, here's what it might sound like in a different position than you're sitting, or here's how to tie your shoes, you usually get the deer in a headlights look. Now, here's the thing. I used to pull the front head off the drum completely. We'd get some halfway decent results with that, but it was James Murphy, guitar player for Death and Obituary and a whole bunch of other Florida death metal bands. He's the one who said, no, get a front resonant head on there and get a hole. That's the sound you're looking for. And you know, I'll defer to the expert there because James has done some really killer records over the years. And yeah, you know what? He's absolutely right. And I'm really happy with the results I'm getting. I mean, like that's what I use all the time. Now, here's the thing. If you've got drummers coming into their, your studio and they're being difficult about the whole cutting a hole in their front head, just have one on hand. You, they can pull that off and put the new one on themselves. And then when the session's done, you can make them take it off and put their own head back on again. When they have all that extra work that they have to do, guess what? Chances are next time they record, they might be a little bit more open to doing things differently. Hi, Glenn. I know your show is about uh, mixing and mastering mics, guitar amps, and all that heavy shit. But uh, I would like to hear your uh, thinking, your, your opinion about uh, music business. I think that could be really, really interesting. Greetings from Mexico. Hey man, greetings from Canada. Thanks so much. It's so cool to see some Mexican fans sending me some stuff. Love hearing from you guys. You guys are awesome. Anyway, as for your question about the music business, it's certainly changed over the years. Uh, there's no money in it, and my advice would be if that label is offering you a deal, run the other way, because chances are you're going to get fucked over. Um, a great example of a band that did it right was Rest Repose. That was Jared Dines and Fluff and Tony Capoce. They did that band. And, you know, they broke the top 10 in iTunes as a complete independent. They toured U.S. completely independent. So they didn't have to hand their money over to a label. They just kept what they made. And that was pretty cool. Fluff and Tony are now doing Dragged Under. They're a lot of fun live. They're heavy as fuck. They're very energetic. And uh, I'm not sure what, the, what their label situation is. Here's the thing. I mean, I mentioned that at an AES panel there a couple years ago. And, you know, there are a few industry types in there. And... Uh, they looked like they wanted to fucking murder me, but hey, this is the fucking truth. This is the this is the landscape these days. Is you don't need a label to make it in music anymore. You can do it yourself. All you got to do is hustle. All you got to do is have something that people want. So if that means creating a YouTube channel with a massive following to get your music across, that's the way how to do it. Okay, my question is simple. Every time I'm trying to use a plugin on my computer going through a Line 6 UX2 interface, there's always a crazy amount of hissing and feedback. It's lesser on the clean channels, but when I play the distorted, it sounds like shit. I can't make heads or tails of this. I've read forum after forum. People are talking about it. There doesn't seem to be a fix to the problem. I really need help with this. Do I look like Harry fucking Potter? Seriously, the Line 6 UX2, I don't know. Get rid of it. Get a decent interface. Spend a couple bucks. I mean... I just tried this out the other day. This is the Black Lion Revolution 2X2. Uh, I put a video out about this yesterday. If you haven't seen it, check it out. This thing's absolutely amazing. It's uh, boutique level quality. It's a really awesome piece of gear and it was only 400 bucks. Absolutely stellar stuff. You probably have a lot more luck using one of these than whatever that Line 6 thing was because uh, I, I think they put that out several years ago. And, I don't know enough about it to, to judge it, but if it seems if you're not finding any luck on the forums, I definitely can't help you, man. That's gonna be uh, be on my skills because I am not a computer hardware designer. I can only tell you what works. Even the cheap Behringer interfaces are pretty amazing these days. Like you can get something for 99 bucks and it's gonna be great. Hell, if you don't wanna spend a lot of money and you wanna do entry level, you can get an Audion Evo. This has got four inputs and four outputs. This is amazing. You can actually send this out to a hardware compressor and back as you're mixing. And it's got a separate guitar input and two headphone outs as well. I mean, like, this is an absolutely killer piece of gear. This is probably best in class for affordable audio interfaces. Uh, get rid of that Line 6 and get something like this. You're gonna have a much easier time because of it. And get yourself a couple free amp sims, believe me. Spend less time fucking around and more time making music. Just get the right tools. Glenn!
Ben, have you ever thought of doing something along the lines of fluffs, array, or roast, but with home studio setups? I think that could be pretty fun and informative for those of us who don't know the ins and outs of studio setup. You know, I've kicked the idea around several times. I think I even asked Fluff there a while back if he'd mind if I do something like that. He was totally cool with that, which is great. Uh, that's my question to you guys. Would you like to do a show like that? Would you like to send me some pictures of your studio and then I can do... Yeah, basically, it, would I mix something in here? Maybe we should call the show that. Would I mix here? Or should you mix in here? That's even better. You guys got some ideas for show titles. I want to hear from you. Leave them below. You weren't wrong about drum samples. Sure, some great albums have used them, but the drummers and the production on those albums weren't exactly bad to begin with. Today, people just give up without trying and perform badly because they plan to rely on replacement. What the hell is that? Hey, Lars, thanks so much for writing in. Lars Norberg, he's been a long-time viewer of the show. Always great to hear from him. Uh, dude, there's a great point with that. Yeah, it's like when we were talking with Paul Lonnie, we were talking about making up peace cells. Like, Gar Samuelson was a monster fucking drummer, so the fact that they used some rudimentary samples to augment the kick and snare, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, the underlying drum sounds were absolutely fucking monstrous to begin with. You, you do have a very good point. Whereas these days, you know, people just mic shit up, throw some triggers on, and away we go. That's, that's the end of it. And we're not really hearing the genius of the drumming anymore. And I think that's a real shame. The opposite side of that is what I started this video with is that nobody's buying CDs, so what's the fucking... You ask, what's up with that? Well, the question you need to ask yourself is, what's the fucking point if we go to all this fucking trouble and nobody's going to buy it, should we really be putting time or effort into making a product that's not going to make any money? That's a question I've got for you, Lars. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on that. Hey Glenn, not sure if you answered this before, but what's your opinion on non-musicians? By this I mean people who are not able to play an instrument that try to make music with software, metal included, that are many great virtual instruments available, albeit at some point you lack the realism of an actual player. Additionally, what's your opinion on EDM or even Kraftwerk? Is it real music in your opinion or not? Oh, I don't know how much my opinion matters. The big question is how much does your opinion matter? If you go buy a Kraftwerk album, do you enjoy it? If so, then hey, great. That's awesome. That's a great thing about music. It can be many things to many different people. We don't all have to agree on the same thing. Variety being the spice of life and all that. Believe me, if everybody liked the exact same thing, we'd get Nickelback. Seriously, though, for those of you guys out there who are just working with virtual instruments and whatnot, hey, you know what? Have at it. You know, Make music by any means you can. I mean, like, back in the 90s, I actually wrote, like, a symphonic piece just on a Roland sound canvas and a, and a DOS MIDI sequencer and just kind of let my imagination run wild. And, you know, I had a lot of fun with it, but I, I didn't expect anybody to take it seriously. Ultimately though, do what you enjoy and don't let anybody tell you it's not real. But to everybody who's sitting there saying, oh, but you always say drum samples suck. Yes, but I've also said, find your own path and find your own sound. I think the problem with a lot of modern metal these days is there's a lot of presets out there and not enough imagination going on and not enough people breaking out from the norm. I think we need some of that. That's what I'd like to see anyway. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for hitting the subscribe button. It really does mean the world to me. If you've got a comment or a question, please leave it below because I love hearing from you. And until next time, Hasadiga Ibawai.